Editing street photography, especially at night, can be a really tricky subject. There's so much you have to deal with. Most of all, that the images can come out really dark. So first of all, you've got to deal with all that exposure, but then you've got to look at the color grading over the top of it as well. Now, I've done a video in the past on the cinematic kind of street view, but what about if we have really dark images at night? How might we approach this? So if all that sounds interesting, stick around because I've got a whole preset we're going to go through now together about how to create some night photography street edits. Now this is the photo that I've already edited up using one of the presets from this pack and as you can see it's quite a cool look that we've got between the uh, blues and the oranges that we've got going on and this is a really nice balance and something I always try and look for in the cinematic but what if we were to reset this and have a look at what does the original image actually look like. That looks more like what you would actually take at night and come out raw from the camera. Now I say this shot is one from Signature Edits so if you want to edit along and try this you can download it from their website as well and I'll put the link in the description for that but you can see the problems that we have here it is first of all too dark there's a lot of detail a lot of things lost at the bottom here secondly we have a massive mix of colors now when you think about the night images the colors are usually more cohesive meaning like what you saw there we have dominant blues and oranges contrasting together when we look at this we have a mix of color most definitely we have this awful kind of green light in the middle here which doesn't look good and then a mixture of warm tones in the background so the aim of this preset is really to consolidate all all of these colors together make something that looks contrasting so that your eyes always got somewhere to look with this and also bring out some of those darker areas now if i go down the side of this preset here you see the massive difference already that this preset has it brings out a lot of that detail especially down in the left side there you can see those colors consolidated together and it gives that kind of nice faded cinematic look but as i go down the presets we can tackle this in a few different styles we can go more cooler and some of those we can dip towards the aqua and the greens and some of them as well or we can go the other end and we can dip into the warms a bit more it really depends if you've also got people in your image and whether you've got the skin tones to worry about as well so if i flick over to this other one here and i hit the reset on this you see again very very dark but we have a person to deal with now and now as i flick down these some of these complement the skin tones like this one and you can put this preset on and then tweak the contrast, make it worth whatever you want. Some of them do not because you'll go too far into making the skin look a bit more orange and red like this one here. So you really have to pick the one that suits best for the skin tones there and it's a preset. Yes, you will have to do some tweaking with it. Let's take another one of this bridge. And again, if I hit the reset on this, and then we go down the presets on the side, you can see again, we get a mixture of differences coming out of this here. And then finally, this one already looks like an amazing shot. And I love this photo. That was some signature edits here. I absolutely love this one. But again, if you want to make it a bit more like Hollywood style, a bit more film style, we can throw one of these over. And we are definitely leaning into the cool looks, but you can see this is very color graded here. So let's go back to this image. Let's take away everything, start from scratch, and let's have a look at each panel and how we can solve these issues and make up a preset for you to use. So actually the first thing we're gonna do here before going into the exposure levels at the top is actually I'm gonna deal with the curves panel because in here is where I wanna bring in some color and contrast as well, but also see if I can handle the light. The curves tool is a really powerful tool do check out another video I've got on the channel there about using this, especially in this context. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, look at raising these darker areas. So I'm gonna create a point and just raise everything up from this bit. Now you can see that's brightening up too much here. So I'm gonna pull down on the highlights and I'm gonna make a midpoint too. So really it's the same sort of thing you would do with these S curves, um, but it's a little bit of reverse here because I'm using it to brighten up the shadow areas. And to get that cinematic -y look, I'm gonna lift this slightly there as well. Now, don't worry too much about the fact that this has made everything like quite faded. It's the first thing and we've not done any basic edit panels yet. I'm also just gonna pull the very tops down too. So now what we'll do is we'll just move across into the different colors here and we're just gonna introduce like an S curve in each of them. So I'm gonna put uh, a midpoint just in and I'm gonna bring an S curve into each one and just go across every channel doing that. Okay, so now that I've done that, it's just really to brighten up a little bit and bring some contrast in. So now I'm gonna go back up to my basic edit panel here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just bring those highlights 
right the way down. And that's because there's a lot of brightness coming out of the lights here. So I tend to, on these presets, bring the highlights all the way down and I'm going for like a, a flat kind of approach. But you could edit this depending on what you want. Same with the shadows, I'm gonna raise the shadows in the opposite way and that really flattens out this whole image there. So now you can see a lot more of the detail coming from the bottom. With the whites and the blacks, we're gonna do a similar thing where I'm just gonna pull the whites down and then I'm gonna move the blacks up a bit there. It really creates a nice flat faded image for us to work with. Now that I'm fairly happy with what's happened on there and with the curves I'm going to use the exposure overall just to bump this and this is really the slider that if you get this preset pack from my website you're going to want to use the most. So you, a lot of the presets may look too dark or too bright when you put them over photos. Yes you could use this preset during some more lighter type photos. The exposure one's the one you're going to want to shift up and down to slide. That's going to make the biggest change on the preset when you put in it over your images. Coming down into the presence, I'm going to add some clarity in, which is again something I tend to do a lot on the street photography side, just because we've got a lot of architecture in there and I want to bring out those sharper like lines of it. And I'm just going to introduce a bit of texture as well. The today's one changes depending again on the style you want to get. If it's a more cinematic approach, sometimes I put the dehaze off and that again makes it a bit more faded. But for this one, I want a bit more of a bolder look. So I'm just going to add some of that in. The vibrancy and saturation is an interesting one. So for a lot of this preset, I tend to put the vibrancy up quite a lot, usually into the 40s, 50s mark. And saturation, I'll go the other way and I will desaturate just a little bit on that. So now if we toggle that on and off, we got this kind of nice flat image going on. We've got some contrast added in there. I feel like it could do with a bit more contrast. So I could go back down to my curves and make some tweaks or I could go overall. And for this one, uh, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna boost the contrast overall on this. I could also use masks and I could go in and target specific areas and bring them out the contrast more of them, but we ain't got time for that today. So now's probably a good time to say, if you are enjoying this and you're finding some value, please do subscribe to the channel help me out a lot also you can grab these presets and any of my other presets down below in the link in the description right let's get back into the editing so next up is going to be the color side and we're going to deal with the hsl first then so on the hue side of this remember we want to get rid of a lot of these greens we want to be dealing with the blues and the warm colors so it might seem weird but the first thing i'm going to do is actually shift the greens all the way over to this side i'm going to be desaturating the greens quite a lot out of this but what this is doing is pushing everything that's green in the image and the composition more into the blue spectrum. Now, by doing that, the blue side of this image is going to be the darker side. Therefore, I'm going to darken down a lot of this foliage and I'm going to give a lot more emphasis on the warm colors, which is all of the lights. The brighter parts of the images will be the lights and not the foliage we have here. Now, for the warm colors next, then I'm going to pull the yellows down quite a bit towards the oranges. This is the slider that's going to change a lot if you're dealing with the skin tone. So some of the presets have the main differences on the oranges and the yellow channels there because of how this preset is going to interact with skin tones. But I'm going to pump that down and I'm going to move this down a bit as well to about 20 and then just push this slightly towards the 12. And if we just toggle on on that, you'll see the biggest change in the green, but now you'll see the walls and the floors. Some of those yellow lighting is now become orange and we're getting that orange tone starting to come out of the preset. Moving over into the blues, we're gonna do a slightly similar thing in that don't want deep blues, we want more towards that aqua tone present in here. So the blues are gonna pull down towards the aquas. And just so they feel together, I'm gonna to push the aquas more towards the blues. And what that's doing is taking any color where it's sitting primarily in either the aqua or the blues and it's pulling them together more. So currently it's looking kind of weird. That's absolutely fine. I'm actually now going to go up into the calibration section here and I'm going to have a play around with this. And the calibration is a really important part of this entire preset as well. It makes a huge difference. If you're not sure how the calibration actually works, check out a video on my channel all about that and you'll learn the effect it has on your images and when and when not to use it. So first of all, I'm going to pull this quite far up to around 50, 60 mark there. And I always like to set the, uh, the hues first before going in with saturation because saturation side is really a personal choice on this. But the hues is like the balance that you can get. I'm gonna pull that around the 80 and I'm gonna go the other way with the blues around 30 to 40. And you can see that's taken away a lot of that green that was still present there in the image. Remember, we're not desaturated anything yet, but now everything that is got that green glow has been pushed towards the orange hues. So this is a great tactic to use in this cinematic look. It's a great tactic to use if you're wanting to go for that blue to orange feel. So now I can come in and just choose what do I want to boost the saturation up on. Well, the green channel is the one I'm not favoring still, so you know, I can pull that all the way down and see the effect it has. 
but I don't want to go that extreme. If you're really not sure what to do with these, this is what I can recommend with every slider in Lightroom is just pull it to the extreme and move backwards. Your eye is better at seeing what it hates and then moving away from it rather than trying to find what it likes and moving towards that. Toggle on and off and that is our calibration. So now I can go back down into the saturation area and I can start to zap out any of these other colors that I'm still not keen on. So first of all, it's that green, it's gotta go. So it's going out 100% of the way. Next one I'm gonna do is just take a look at the purples and magentas and see if there's anything going on. There's very, very little going on on that channel, so I'm actually gonna leave both of these alone for the minute. Now the blues are gonna differ from photo to photo. You can see as I pull them down here, I lose quite a lot of my blues, but I am gonna bring in some of my blues back again with the color grading that comes next. So I'm gonna desaturate them out for now and then decide if I wanna bring any more of them back in later. The warms are gonna have the biggest impact here in the colors, but they're still gonna be desaturated down again. I'll toggle that on and off and you can see it does feel like I've zapped a lot of that color, but now I'm prepped for my color grading. I mentioned before, the green foliage is gonna to be towards the blues, which can be darker. So we're gonna darken the blues and we're gonna lighten anything that's warm, the orange tones here. And that's because a large amount of the composition is gonna fall into the blues with the sky and all that. The highlight bits are the lights. They're already bright. We just wanna bring them out a bit more. So next up is coming down into the color grading then. And this is where we're going to basically overlay that blue look over the entire thing. And again, from preset to preset in your edits, you can choose whether you want this more of a blue or an aqua, and you can mix between the two. So I'm just gonna go into the shadows first and bring in a bit of the blue to that area there. And I'm also gonna dip this down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the highlights, but the highlights I'm gonna add more into the aqua side. probably around 170 on the hue. And I'm going to raise this up slightly more there. So now if I toggle that on and off, you can see that that's applied a really nice kind of color grade over the top of this. That's just introducing all that blue. So now's when I feel like I can come back up here and I can probably bring in some more of that blue tone. So you see, as I raise it, I get this lovely tone in the sky there now, and I can choose how much of that I want in. And then again, maybe I wanna bring my oranges a bit stronger. And the combination of color here between the HSL sliders, the color grade, and the calibration is really key. Problem is, a lot of it looks terrible until you've got all three of them done. So you've really gotta have that mindset as you're going through this. For the final touches then, I'm gonna put some sharpening onto this. Uh, I usually sharpen around 60 to 70, but if you hold down Option and click on the mask, you wanna have just really those edges of the buildings and the brickwork. So you don't want to be sharpening everything here in the image. You want to be, again, just like I said, the clarity is there to highlight out the architecture side. You're doing the same with the sharpening. And then finally, because it's a nighttime image, I am going to add a vignette just to help draw the eye into the middle. So I'm going to go quite aggressive on this, but also lower the midpoint and just feather this so it feels a bit more like a gentle pull the eyes into the middle there. Once I've got all that in place, then I can simply go up and down through my preset and decide if I want to introduce any more exposure or any more of the colors. And there you go. If we go for a before and after, you can see that this is a drastic difference from what looks like just an ordinary photo taken on the street to a really cool edit. And this is the great thing about these types of presets is you can really get that Instagram style of look on these photos from something that looks not great in camera. What's also fun is if you've got a really dark photo, you're generally not sure what you've actually captured in the camera until you start doing these edits. So I hope you all found that useful. Remember, you can grab this preset down below in the link, subscribe and all the usual stuff, and I will see you in the next one.